With concealed carry on the rise, more and more people are getting their license. The little micro subcompact pistols are really taking the market. They are coming out right now with a lot of 9mm subcompacts, but here are some of the standbys that have been around for a little while. And these are all four very comparable, some of the smallest 380s on the market. Now we're going to take a look at all four of them and get a good comparison for size, weight, how they function, and the quality. And I think we're going to talk about some important things that you need to consider when choosing the right little subcompact for concealed carry because your life can depend on it or your family. Now what started this revolution was the kel P3AT and this is one of the lightest 380s in the world and so with concealed carry that is a huge factor but also we have came out right after that was the Ruger LCP in a really nice high quality finished pistol. Then we have the Taurus TCP. Now this particular one has the stainless slide but this is Taurus's version uh, for the uh, micro concealed carry. And then we have the IO Hellcat 380. And this one we just visited the factory and this is really kind of what got me thinking about doing a comparison of all these in the first place. A lot of comments about this pistol compared to some of the others and so I just thought you know what there's a lot of questions out there let's just take a look at all the facts. Now I have individual reviews on all four of these pistols. I will have the link in the description or you can go onto my channel and do a search. Just type in the different type pistol and there'll be a full review of each one. How to break it down, a lot of the specifics. Now there are two different very important factors here that were the reason for these pistols and that was weight and size. And because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little comparison about what is what. One of the things that I want you to consider with weight and size is the smaller the pistol the more felt recoil you're going to have now that's what these pistols are designed for they're not a lot of fun to take out to the range and just shoot but what they are good for is for ultralight concealed carry and because of that there are a few trade-offs so if you're looking for something to go out to the range and just have a big day shooting a hundred rounds or two hundred rounds these are not necessarily the pistols that you want to do that with, even though you definitely need to be proficient with them and to take them out to the range. And that is important, especially if you're going to carry something that you depend your life on. And I'm going to start out first, of course, with the kel because it is the lightest pistol in this group. It weighs 8.3 ounces. The LCP and the IO Hellcat both come in at 9.4 ounces. And then the heavyweight of these little mouse guns is the Taurus TCP and it is 10.2 ounces. Now next we're going to talk about the length, the length of the pistol and coming in together at the lowest length are the LCP and the Hellcat both coming in at 5.16 inches and this is just under five and a quarter inches in length. Next comes the kel at 5.2 inches, so just slightly larger, slightly longer. And then we have the TCP at 5.25, so it is a definite five and a quarter inches in length. Now the width of the pistol, hands down, the kel is 0.77 inches. That is incredibly thin, just over three quarters of an inch in thickness. And it is the thinnest, smallest, lightest pistol on the market. The rest of these pistols, all three, are 0.82 inches. The barrel length on these pistols, the shortest is 2.7, but the Ruger and the Hellcat come in at 2.75. And then the Taurus comes in at 2.84. So you're going to have just a slight barrel difference. In fact, it's probably mostly the part of the barrel that sticks out of the slide itself. Now having reviewed all four of these guns in the past year or so, one of the important factors to me is the grip. And the, if you have a really small, tiny grip, even though 380 is really the lowest of your self-defense rounds, it is a powerful round and it does generate a significant amount of recoil. The first review I did was on the kel 380. And because of its real thinness, it, even it is really tiny in the hand, but man, you've got to really hold on to that grip. And it's sometimes difficult to follow up on the second and third shots. The Ruger was the same. The grip is small, 
and grabbing hold of it if you're not careful and if you don't go out and practice and that's one of the main things you need to go out especially with these really small grips to practice and know what you to know what to expect when you're firing these these pistols but because the grip is important what I did was really to make it easier to figure out was I did it in millimeters because if you did in inches it's a lot of fractions and so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the very smallest grip so the smallest grip is by far the kel -Tec. and it is 43 and a half this dimension and then 18 and a half this dimension the next smallest is the Ruger and the Ruger starts out at 45 this dimension and then 19.5 here in the thickness then we have the Hellcat which is 48 inches at its widest point and 19 and a half in thickness the Taurus TCP is 46 and a quarter this dimension and then 21 in this dimension And just to be honest with you, as far as shooting all these, this is the most comfortable to shoot because it gives you a little more gripping surface. Next comes the Hellcat. And then the Ruger and the kel -Tec, it just comes down. So it's Taurus, Hellcat, LCP, and then your kel -Tec. Now we're going to check trigger pull. And of course, these guns have been safety checked, and I pulled the magazines out. And we're going to start out with the kel -Tec. These pistols are all double action only. They're all six in the magazine and one in the chamber. So we're just going to go ahead and check this out. Very smooth. Comes all the way back. Oops. A good crisp trigger. Next we're going to try the Ruger. A little more creep coming back. A little more tension. The trigger pull is pretty heavy on the Ruger. And then there's some heavy creep and then the snap. The Hellcat. Very smooth. All the way back. And then a very crisp little pop. Okay, now we have the Taurus. A little heavier coming back. Not as bad as the Ruger. But the let off is really nice. Now as far as trigger pull goes, I have to say that the Hellcat is my favorite. Uh, with the smoothness and the snap. Next, and very closely next, is the kel -Tec. Very smooth trigger, very crisp let off. Next comes the Taurus TCP. Uh, it is a nice crisp let off. It is a little heavier than the other two. And then the Ruger comes in last. It's just a little bit heavy, and there's a little bit of creep there toward the end. But still, all four very serviceable. Okay, now as far as the uh, the fit and feel, the ergonomics of the pistol, the kel has an aggressive grip to it, and it is somewhat easier to grab hold of. You're not really concerned about any kind of slippage. It is small, but to me, actually, the finish is a little bit rougher finish than the others, but it is very functional. Next, with the Hellcat, it's a very smooth, nicely finished frame. It's not super aggressive. It does have a little more of a full-size feel to it. I really like this distance as far as shooting. Next, we're going to look at the Ruger. The Ruger is very nicely finished. It does, because of this uh, finger groove right here, this little rest, it makes it feel really nice in the hand. The Ruger itself has a very, everything is well-rounded, so it has a really nice feel to it. And then the Taurus. Taurus has a great, it's got almost a palm swell right here. So it really kind of, it fills the hand a little bit better. And it is a nicely finished uh, polymer frame at the bottom. Uh, it does have this finger thumb place right here to arrest to be able to get your thumb in. I really like the, the way the TCP feels. Now the slide serrations themselves, 
very easily to grip on the Keltec. The Hellcat, a little bit smoother, but easy to grip hold of. The Ruger, straight up and down, a little more aggressive. The TCP has scallops. Very nice. Very easy. That's the Ruger. Hellcat. The uh, Keltec. And the Taurus. Now take down on these pistols is pretty much the same. I just get a little tension then bring out the pin. You want to make sure of course the gun is unloaded and then it slides right off. The barrel, the recoil spring, the functions they're very similar but as we all know most of them are taken from the old Browning design originally anyway. There are a few cosmetic differences but pretty much overall they're very close. We have an insert here that's metal inside the frame in the Hellcat. Uh, in the uh, Keltec is also metal frame. It's just an insert into the TCP as the others and in the Ruger as well. So there's no big surprises here. They're all pretty much very similar in quality and very similar in function. Okay, as far as mag release goes, right here, the Hellcat. The Keltec, right here in the really great place. Uh, the Ruger LCP stands out just a little bit here with a little indention. Comes out nicely. And then we have the Taurus, which has a little bit more of a paddle. And of course, they have the different mag base plate. Okay, as far as trigger guards go, the Taurus has the largest trigger guard that comes out. You're going to have more room here. I believe that the Ruger is next. A nice oval to match the design of the pistol. And then looking at the difference between the Hellcat and the Keltec, a little bit of a different shape. This has a little more of an oblong shape. This is more rounded, but I believe really the space isn't that much different. Maybe just a touch bigger in the Keltec. But it does ride really close to the trigger. Gonna load each mag starting with the Hellcat. Just see this, compare the smoothness of the magazine, very smooth. We're going to try the uh, Keltec. Very smooth as well. About the same as the Hellcat. The Ruger. Seems like a little more tension on the spring, but still very smooth. Then we have the Taurus. A little, just a little more resistance. Not quite as slick, but still easy to load. The Keltec P3AT. The IO Hellcat. The Ruger LCP. Taurus TCP.
Unfortunately, my accuracy targets were left down at the range and they got wet and they tore. I had forgotten about them and uh, just remembered before while I was working on the video. These are two of the targets themselves. This was the TCP. This was the uh, Hellcat. And I will say that the uh, they were the better of the accuracy, even though they were all fairly close. Uh, one of the problems I was having with the Keltec was seeing the front sight, and the accuracy was not as good. And also on the Ruger, mainly because of the trigger pull. Trigger pull is difficult, and uh, you, you know it makes it a little bit more difficult to get really good accuracy. But up close, uh, we're still getting in the eight inch ring in the center of mass. Uh, all the rounds were really good. So uh, the accuracies are pretty decent. I will say, though, that the um, Hellcat and the Taurus actually excelled a little bit in this test. Now, there is one feature that the Taurus TCP has above the rest, and that is the slide release. Last round, hold open, and the other three do not have that feature. Now, the Ruger LCP also has a slide stop. It doesn't hold open on the last round, but if you pull it back, you can push up on this button and it holds the slide open. One really important aspect are sights. And while I was doing my shooting, I really found out what was the best sight picture. Uh, I'm going to say right away that the kel has the worst. In fact, I could barely see the sights. And here, you can see that they are difficult to see at best. Now, this is a low-profile, up-close-and-personal self-defense pistol, but the sights are difficult to see. On the Taurus, same thing, it's, they're really low. Of course, they're snag-free, and there's a lot of advantages to having low sights, and they are there, but they're very difficult to pick up. Uh, with the stainless, I could actually pick these up a little bit better. Well, now, on this Ruger, there's a little mar orange mark at the top, and that was added later. Uh, this typically doesn't have anything there. So that helps this sight to be a lot easier to see than it would be just basic, because otherwise, you really couldn't see that sight either. Now, the Hellcat has the best sight. Uh, it does come with a little green mark here. Of course, you could add that to these other pistols. But one of the things that really gives this pistol a little advantage is that they mill out the top of the slide and they mill out right here in front of the slide. So it just brings down this surface. So your sights aren't any higher, it's just that the slide is a little lower and it does give you a better sight picture. It, out of all four of these pistols, they are very comparable in finish, fit, and quality. Uh, you know, you may have a few more refinements with the Ruger. It is a nice pistol. And to be honest with you, which is a little bit surprising, the Taurus has really nice features. The Hellcat, an excellent pistol. And I've really shot a lot of rounds through this in particular. Uh, the uh, kel of course, world-renowned for being the smallest. You need to pick out what's right for you. Go and put them in your hands. If you can go to a place that has all four, Get them in your hand, try them out, see which one really fits. One of the things that I do want to mention about that, though, is the gripping surface of the gun when you're shooting is going to be from here to here, not really in the thickness of the grip. And that's the way you're going to hold it. So you need to take that into consideration when you are making your choice. Okay, to do a decent price comparison, not necessarily what you can get it for in your area, but the highest priced of the four was typically the LCP. And it, I saw it running $288, $299. The kel was running $279, $299 also. Next comes in the Hellcat, which runs about $240, $245. And then the Taurus LCP, I saw one for $239. So these are coming in pretty even, and then these are coming in pretty even. Uh, just to give you kind of a ballpark. But, and as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun reviews and sensible survival. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Then we have the Hellcat, which is 48 inches at its widest point. Now what started this whole revolution was the kel -Tec. Now what started this whole revolution? Now what started, now what started this little revolution was the kel 
P3AT. And really, they are really, and this has been a lot of fun doing this comparison.